Hi, everybody. It's Patrick Scullin and Travis Hansen, and with us today is Adriana Blake. Hi. We're glad to have you here with us to, uh, to draw and to talk art and creativity. Um, we're really enjoying this process, Travis and I getting to know other artists and then discuss these things together. Um, Adriana is a very talented artist who uh, lives on the East Coast, no offense, no problem, right? <laughs> um, who is a storyboard artist in, um, in animation and has worked on a number of shows over the years and also has her own projects that she's worked on, including, uh, I understand it, a, a web comic, autobi autobiographical comic, um, Fall On Me, is that right? Yes, that's correct, yeah. Um, what else can you tell us about yourself? Anything you wanna mention? Oh man, um, yeah, that kind of sums it up. I mean, I'm orig I was originally born and raised in Venezuela, then lived in the U.S. from the age of 16 till I was about 22, then hopped on to Canada for school, but then, uh, I don't know, met this Canadian guy, we kind of like clicked, <laughs> and we kind of like got married, or just, I don't know, like we we're like married and have a kid now, something like that, I don't know. Congratulations. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Felicitaciones. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I heard the oh, yeah. I heard the bout there too. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So I'm kind of in uh, hopping all over. So That's yeah. great. So you yeah. mix Spanish and Canadian and English all together. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like yeah. A I guess. <laughs> That's awesome. It's it's a funny thing. It's it's like it's it's like it's uh it's English from like Houston, Texas. So it's Texan English, <laughs> and then Canadian, and and then the Venezuelan Spanish. You, you, yeah, I don't know. It's a thing, I guess. <laughs> Sounds Very awesome. Cool. Sounds awesome. <laughs> well, um, to get us get it to get us going today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, you know how artists do this balancing act between whether it's family and the day job and creative projects and all the stuff that goes into it. And so I have some questions that are going to kind of lead us into that. But mm -hmm. before I I start those questions, um, I'm going to pass the ball over to my buddy Travis who's gonna talk about our drawing uh, exercise for the day. Well, today uh, we're not gonna draw happy trees, but we are gonna draw, um, we're gonna have a lot of fun drawing mermaids today or merfolk, anything in the ocean. So we'll start off with that and, and have a good time drawing that. I actually wore my Hawaiian shirt. This is my lucky Hawaiian oh, shirt. Man. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, it, it was a, it, it's in memory of a friend of mine. Um, so he always had this really super positive attitude and, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed him. And, and when he passed on, um, I got one of his shirts. So whenever I need good luck, I'll put on my Hawaiian shirt and I'll just go to town. So <laughs> it, it just makes the day better. So yeah, today we're going to draw mer merfolk or mermaids, however you want. Um, and uh, as we usually go, I'll go first and uh, we'll start. We'll show my screen a little bit and then we'll jump on to Adriana. And then we'll go to Patrick, who needs a lot of time sometimes yes. to get to where yes. he's going. So he cheats. I, uh, I'm the slow guy. <laughs> the slow one of the bunch. Um, well, while you're getting set up, Travis, here's, uh, here's our first question to kind of pass around. Um, and uh, just uh, how do you, uh, are there any tips you have for, creating that balance, finding time to work on creative projects while dealing with the day job or dealing with the family. You know, what, uh, what have you guys done? What do you, what do you find yourselves doing to make that work? I think that sometimes you, you have to look at it at where you're at in your career too, and that balance, because, you know, we hit a lot of different areas in our career. Sometimes we're working another job and then we're trying to do our own thing and balance the freelance and everything else in there. And then we try to, uh, end up having a family in the mi in the midst of all of it uh as many people know i'm a i'm a dad of five and uh, i've got grandkids bless you now. sir I, you know bless my wife that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> but you know after 25 years of this it, it's been different stages of how do you create balance within those stages when i was working two jobs and 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 traveling and stuff you know there was a lot of of craziness in it and now I just work for me and there's still a lot of craziness, but the balance is a little bit different because there's only one child at home and not five. It's probably a lot quieter at your house then. Uh, it is because she loves to read. So we have a <laughs> 12 year old that, or 11 year old that uh, um, thinks that she's uh, 35. So, you know, it's all good. <laughs> now, 
Adriana, you mentioned that uh, you're married with a child. How old is, is your, uh, um, your I have a five-year-old daughter. Her name's Olivia. Um, Cute. Yeah, so it's, uh, so I'm still in the early stages. It's just the one kid, but it's definitely changed things a lot because um, I, I live outside of Toronto. So in a, a, most of the jobs, in the animation jobs are in downtown Toronto. So there's a lot of commuting for the most part. Um, only later in my career, and well now definitely because of, well, the current uh, world situation, I've been working from home. But um, most of my career has been, it has involved a lot of commuting. So um, prior to having her, obviously, it wasn't that much of a deal. Like, I mean, my husband and I were able to better navigate how to, you know, balance our, you know, work life, you know, they can think, you know, time together, dates, or, you know, dealing with things around the house and stuff. Uh, and be, like, because he, he's, he's also a tool and die maker. He's not in the industry. He's not an artist, but then he also has shift work. So anyway, we just, it was all over the place, but we made it work between just the two of us, but then add a kid to the mix and it's just like completely blows everything out of the water. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so yeah, it's, um, it's definitely made things uh, very different. Uh, well, do you find yourself you find yourself having to, to carve away little bits of time in the evening or in the oh, morning yeah. or how do you do it? It's, it's, uh, I don't know. I, I take it. It's gotten a bit better, but it's still a one day at a time sort of thing. I think, um, I mean, there are better days. There are some uh, worse days. I mean, like, uh, Olivia thankfully is a very, uh, very uh, good kid. Like she's not, not high maintenance in the sense of like, I mean, she's, she has, she's really good at entertaining herself sometimes and then other times up you know obviously she'll want to spend it with mommy and daddy but then um but then uh yeah we just try to i mean like definitely having a lot of help from uh from the my in-laws you know like the grandparents That's has great. been invaluable um and then uh i mean anytime like we you know we need an extra hand but then also um just having to be much more mindful and like purposeful i think of your, of your scheduling like okay from this hour to this hour, I'm doing art. And then yeah. after that, forget about it. It's family time. It's dinner time. It's, you know, it's just a do be, do a better job at uh, putting each thing. It's an own, like a little, I guess, compartment or sure. I, I don't know how to, yeah. If that makes any sense. That makes perfect sense. You know, cause you can't focus without, you have to, to create some sort of functional working environment, but at the mm -hmm. same time be flexible enough that you can move out of that environment as needs be. I mean, mm -hmm. I remember when we first started this this whole journey. I, I sat with Janelle once, and you know, and and I said, "I'm home, but I'm not home." Mm -hmm. You can bug me, and I will stop whatever I'm doing, and I will talk, and I will socialize, but I still have to get this done because we all like to eat over here. And uh, <laughs> that's true, true, true. And so it took a bit because it's really easy when you when you're a, a and I think Adriana you've been through this when you're an at home artist or any kind of job that you work at home it's very easy for people to go oh you're home you can go watch the kid for a minute watch the, while I go out or do this and, and you oh can't. oh yeah oh yeah been it's there like a, been like, there <laughs> like work so so I definitely can see that um, I've really enjoyed when you started doing your comic about your family. Um, and I really enjoyed the honesty that you put into that. I, I think it really kind of helped see things a little bit differently. Um, and I want my question to you, because I think that's part of balance is you were working still in animation and now you're doing your own comic. How were you able to balance that out for a little bit? Well, I mean, it, I, I mean, as, as you probably know, like, unfortunately, like for the last three years, the comic had to fall on the wayside and it was precisely as a way of trying to find that balance because after a while, I mean, as much as I wanted to continue it, it became, it, it became more of a, I guess, I don't want to say chore because it makes it sound like a negative thing, but. Oh, no, they can become chores. It was definitely becoming a lot more challenging. And like as uh, Alex, that's my husband's name, and I were trying to figure out our, you know, what worked best for us. I didn't want to have like an extra thing occupying my, my like my mind and my you know just my like as we were trying to figure out what worked for us but um 
that said, I did, I have been writing down like little anecdotes anyway, and like part of me and hope to maybe get back to them and actually make them into comics, but if anything, just so at least are not forgotten. Um, Cause that's essentially how I started Fall On Me. It started like just me like making notes of little, uh, little funny things that would happen in, uh, in, you know, in life with my husband. And then like suddenly like, hey, you know what? I could do something with this. And that's how it kind of started. So I definitely, um, I definitely relate to that. That's kind of where I started with my comic strip, Super Siblings, that it, it started when my boys were little and I was ripping them off all the time. <laughs> you know, whatever funny, silly thing they did, I was throwing in there somehow. But, nice, uh, nice. you know, about six years ago, uh, I started teaching full time and I couldn't do the daily grind of my comic strip anymore. And I, I had a really hard time with that for a while. It, it was, I felt guilty that I wasn't working on it enough. Mm -hmm. But uh, it took me a while to kind of reorient and reorient my schedule so I could continue working on it. But I still don't publish it uh, as a daily comic strip anymore. It's turned mm. into maybe like an annual process. I try to put out a new book. Well, I find year. also that to be very therapeutic in its own way. I mm. mean, there are moments where um, even though I draw like Life of the Party and the Bean and I have a lot of fun with it and elements of my life do get into that quite a bit. Um, I, I found that I would also draw comics of my own family of situations. Uh, there's a great That's dangerous, one. Travis. Oh, it's totally dangerous. <laughs> uh, there, there's one where um, it's at the dinner table and uh, it's one of the best lines I've ever heard. And, and my son, right out of the blue, he looks at us and he, and he had been 11 or 12 at the time. And, and uh, we had all the little kids there and, and, he looks at me, he, he's, matter of fact, he goes, did you know that French kissing could dislocate your tongue? And my wife looked at me straight forward and just said, this one's all you. And <laughs> I, it, it turned out to be one of the best, funniest little comics I'd ever drawn because it was so innocent and so true. Well, many, many years later and, and talking with them, um, these little comics are more for them. It's kind of like remembering history in a way that mm -hmm. they connect to. And it has been such a, a blessing uh, that something I drew 15 years ago has meaning to them. So when I'm gone, you know, their kids are going to look at it and go, well, what is this dad? Or, you know, and, and be able to enjoy a little bit of what we went through when they were growing up. So I think it's, it's definitely therapeutic and twofold. I think it's got some great stuff uh, to allow you to do some stuff. Let's, uh, shall we switch some screens? Well, before we do, um, I haven't been paying attention to yours at all. This is amazing, Travis. What do you got going on here? Beautiful. <laughs> I just, I just put a couple of, uh, uh, merm people in there and I figured I needed a Fabio mermaid so <laughs> That's awesome. got his long hair and stuff like that now I, I always get strung out because it's a kid show and I, I you know I make sure that my mermaids have shells but the other day I was thinking that's got to cut into the skin so I haven't figured out a, a really nice um, change for the shell uh, one day because starfish I think would be more miserable also because <laughs> So I, I struggle with that. I don't know what Disney was thinking when they put that together, but uh, I just wanted to kind of create now a little underwater scene. And then as we, we look further into it, I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll refine it. Um, if you notice though, uh, I use double colors. Uh, I actually more, and that's allowing me to create background and foreground. And at the same time, um, if I was to use brown through the whole image, I think it would muddy the whole image to the point where I couldn't see where the, where the difference was in the elements of the character and in the backgrounds. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a big, big proponent of when you're drawing that the background, um, I mean, a lot of people focus solely on character and they draw these great characters and they're really, really awesome, but they can't put the character in an environment. Mm -hmm. And to me, being able to put a character into envi an environment is crucial um, in storytelling. You've got mm -hmm. to be able to do it. And, and I know that when I'm looking for an artist to work with or, you know, I want to see everything they can do. I, I you know, they might have great character design, but I, I want to see them put that character in action and movement and be able to tell an actual story with what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, yeah, that's kind of what's going on. So we got our two mermaids and, and uh, I might add some fish and uh, we'll see what that happens. Nice. 
So we're gonna, I'll stop and then we'll jump into Adriana's screen. All right, I kind of took a bit of a head start with this doodling, but I haven't drawn the mermaid yet, although I'm trying to create a little, I'll show you. Uh, share screen. Okay, share. And you guys can see. Oh, nice. that's awesome. I'm trying to create a little story here and that's, yeah. I like, that's one thing I've, I've been like, well, from comic making, but now definitely from uh, doing storyboards is like, I try to get a little bit more into trying to tell a story. So I have a little bit of an idea here. Hopefully it turns out. I'm so rusty, like drawing my own stuff. <laughs> I've been only drawing <laughs> like storyboard stuff that I'm like, how, how do I draw again? What's my style like anymore? I don't even know. So well, I'm hoping it turns out. Up a couple things there I want to follow up on. One is um, how important story is. I, I like hearing about that. Um, would you mind talking about that a little more, how you develop story ideas? But then secondly, I'm interested in being a storyboard artist, uh, what it's like adopting other styles or the house style to work in. Oh, man. Um... Well, I mean, like nobody, one of the things like I, I had a, I had a misunderstanding on when I first started, but that I was glad I was wrong on was that um, I thought people expected you to just know how to draw everything from the top of your head. That's not true. Reference, 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 reference. I mean, like, yeah, obviously the drawing a lot and practicing a lot and all that, like it's very important, but I mean, like nobody expects you to just know everything just from memory or from the top, you can, that's, that's, that's false. Like, so when you first start on a show, I mean, then you are, yeah, they, they want you to, to have a good, I, a, you know, good ability of like, of, of drawing things like, you know, the good sense of like structure, basic, uh, you know, anatomy, basic, um, like composition, like storytelling ability, um, in like visual storytelling ability. But then when it comes down to drawing to the style, of the show, then that's something that they walk you through. And sometimes it's even a, a matter of discovery if it's like a first season show, which I am, I, I am on right now, is something that's constantly evolving. So, um, so that's, uh, that's it's, it's exciting and it's a little bit scary too. I mean, like the exciting part is almost like you're helping the, the, the showrunners to discover the, you know, the show with, you know, you're helping them discover it but at the same time it's like yeah you also um you're also like oh, i don't have a template or like a like a a given on how to you know how to make this happen but it's 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 good it's good it's like I, again like it's i see it as an opportunity to learn like there's always definitely keeps me on my toes um for sure so um so yeah uh I'm that's good that you are using um sketchbook pro i am I find it, I have, uh, I have Clip Studio Paint as well, um, but I, I've usually, the last few year, the years or year and a bit of fall on me, um, I was using a Clip Studio to, uh, to clean up my, my work, but I find for sketching just doodles, I just, I, I find it a lot more intuitive and easier to do with Sketchbook Pro. So, I mean, that's why I kind of decided to stick to this. I like um, it. Yeah, I, I worked on Sketchbook Pro for a while, and I, I did enjoy it. Um, but I'm now fully into Studio Paint. And Patrick, he's our Procreate guy, so. Oh, nice. Uh, that's that's something maybe for later, like for me to <laughs> pass on. But yeah, I think I think a lot of it though is what are you using it for? Um, you know, I, and most people they they hear a program and I think they get afraid and they're like, oh. You know, I got to know Photoshop or I got to do this. And, and in reality, it, it's taking multiple programs and, and using them together. I don't just use strictly Adobe. I'm using three or four programs to get the desired effect. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, whatever works. I mean, every artist is different. Every, uh, every, yeah, as long as you, yeah, if, as long as it works for you, I think it's all valid. So let me ask you this, you know, looking at what you're, you're creating here, um, and we obviously see someone stealing food, <laughs> yes. which is great. Um, when you're blocking out a scene, um, talk about the process of blocking out the scene. Okay. Um, well, working as a board artist, like I, I'm usually given uh, a script. So I at least have an idea, obviously, of what's coming. It's not, I mean, you still have a blank page in, the term, in terms of like no visuals, but you at least have a, you know, have a script to know what's going on. And usually you will have a meeting with your director who may, may or may not give you 
uh, some of um, some of their vision as to what they want to see. I mean, they might give you at least some like like at least like the money shots, like oh, I'm I, I'm I'm kind of visualizing this for this part, and but the rest of it is up to you to kind of connect the dots. Um, but then, um, so yeah, just uh, I I'm usually the kind of person who will grab the script, like I'll print it over. This is uh, I'm not going to show you much, but uh, <laughs> I'll uh, I'll literally like have like little. I, I can't, okay. I don't know if you can't see, like... Uh, oh, no, you have your notes. Yeah, I have little notes. And they're, like, and sometimes just little, like, chicken scratches, like, little circles. And I just point, like, put, like, little, like, mm -hmm. initials for, like, okay, and this is, you know, this is, per, like, you know, character A and character B. And, like, and, like I'm, I'm trying, first trying to figure out, like, what the camera. Like, is, it, is this a wide shot? Is this a medium shot? Is this a close-up? Is this, is this this have all characters in it, only the one character, and then just try to block it from there. And then I zoom in into, in detail in terms of, okay, are they happy? Are they sad? What's their expression like? What's the, um, what's the intent? And then just kind of go from there. So, um, so for a moment, you become the director. And exactly. Yeah, you kind of are. You have, you have like a kind of mini director in a way. You have to then, you know, and then then I have to literally pitch it to the actual director <laughs> after I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm done. Because I, have, I do a rough pass, like maybe something similar to what I'm drawing right now. Like I'm not supposed to really spend uh, too much time because you have to draw a, draw a whole bunch of um, scenes. Yeah, whole, um, um, you know, a whole, whole bunch to present the whole episode. And then, yeah, and then you go from there. But I mean, like, it's uh it's something that's taken me a while even today to to get uh to um get past or let go of is the the fact that the f your first idea is not going to be necessarily the perfect idea i mean it's a, it's a it's a launching pad you're you're uh doing a storyboard is a blueprint so to speak to then later on make it better and better and better until you get a final episode and then it's you know hopefully if all goes well it's amazing but uh, so if you're if you're working with a the director, um, you know, on average, how often would you change your storyboards based on their their critique or their uh, desires? Uh, well, you uh, depends on each um, depends on each uh, project on each uh, uh, yeah, like on each show. But typically, at least, I can only speak for he, like the industry here in Toronto and for TV animation, like for for children's TV animation. Um, you would get a, but at, like the the board artist after pitching. A rough they are given a note like a like a revision pass and then you're expected to make those revisions along with the cleanup like just clean up the drawings then you show it again like you do a cleanup um pass then the the uh, director might give you another set of revisions but this time not as heavy ideally hopefully because you only you're, you're only given a limited amount of time to address them before then you have to pass it on to the storyboard revisionist team because there's usually a storyboard revisionist team to then uh, take over uh, your your storyboard and then finesse it or, because I mean, the thing is that after, after I've drawn what's on the script, then it goes on to the editor to then put it up onto an animatic. And then if things for whatever reason don't, don't seem quite what, you know, don't seem quite right, then there's still always room for improvement. I mean, and that's not to say that it's, the scripts at fault or that the the board artist that is at fault or anything it's just this is a very organic inexact uh kind of process like it's always a bit of like a experimenting like okay this this joke sounded funny in the script but maybe it's not as funny you know once you actually see it visually or you know what with this this is running way too long like the script just went nuts with all you know the amount of content and we only only have 11 minutes to you know to present our entire story we have to trim or this is running too short what you know what i mean like so there's always uh th something to do and something to you know to improve on so and that's just part of the process so it's pretty awesome I, i'm yeah. enjoying watching your process here too yeah sorry i'm getting a little bit like stiff here because i mean like i said i haven't drawn like my own uh, thing in a while like if I could if I could draw the, the characters on the storyboard like from the show that I'm working on it would be like done in a second but <laughs> that's just how it is so well, so that's a good question about balance yeah you know, finding finding balance within your own story work and then finding balance in working for somebody else yeah yeah um I mean I don't know I'm I'm personally I mean like 
I don't know. I, I still haven't quite figured that one out. Like, I mean, obviously, like, I'm still like, I'm still like, I want to draw more for myself. But then like, there's also the element of like, well, okay, I've spent eight hours drawing, uh, like doing my job. And now I only have a little bit of time left to spend well, with my family you. before I have to go to bed and lather, rinse, repeat. So it's a matter of making that choice. It's like, do I keep drawing for my, do, you know, do I keep drawing, but this time switching gears to my, do my own stuff or do I spend time with my family, which is kind of, ah, kind of a no brainer in the sense of, well, my family's more important. So, well, I think, uh, I think part of this, this question for me just gets into the idea that when we're young, we, we have this kind of magical idea of being a working artist and you'll be able to do anything and everything you love and it'll be this most beautiful creative experience. Yeah. But there are a lot of, I don't want to say compromises, but there are a lot of challenges to being a working <laughs> artist, especially when you're working for someone else. You still need to meet their needs and. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, they're then, paying the bills. So yeah, they're paying the bills. And it's their, <laughs> right. And then uh, when it, it comes time to work on a personal project, you, it's okay to set it aside. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when you're working and got other needs to take care of. Oh, no, definitely. I, I mean, and that's not to say that I have any, uh, obviously, I love my job. I love, I, I mean, it's a good problem to have. I, I you know, I'm, I'm super happy to be where I am. I mean, admittedly, yes, I miss working on my own stuff. But on the other hand, it's like, again, it's, it's a good problem to have. I mean, it's. Uh, oh, it's a nice balance, you know. Yeah. And, and looking well, at it, I mean, being in the industry as well, jobs change all the time in our industry. And most yeah. artists don't realize that. You know, when you're done with your, your season, and if you guys don't get picked up again, you're now looking for another job. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't get to so really. How do, how do you create um, an, a mental preparedness uh, for that? Because a lot of artists, animators especially, don't last a long time because it gets so overwhelming that they've got to look for another gig and they don't know what they're going to do. And, and the fear comes in, uh, you've been at this for a while. So, so how have you been able to get past that? Um, <laughs> I don't or, know. It's hard. It's hard. Cause I mean, it's, I just feel like I've been very, very fortunate. Like uh -huh. the first, I have to, admittedly the first couple of years were really hard. Like the, like the projects were, few and far in between. So that's when it helped to, well, obviously not only save up, but also having a husband not in the industry, admittedly. Cause then like he could keep us both afloat, but at the same time, like once, you know, once I guess like I, I got, you know, I got it into gear and like, I guess uh, I, you know, I finally made, got my foot in the door and like and people knew me more and like they were, you know, just be more, yeah, it, it just, after a while, like I've hardly had to present the portfolio to, or we have too rigorous a process to get a job, thankfully, but that's just after a while. Like it's, uh, you know, after having so much experience in the, in the field, but I mean, and that's not to say, I mean, like it's, it's a number of, it's a number of factors because it's like, I mean, it's, it's the, the time, the right timing, the right, the right project, the um, obviously whether the, your, your skill set is the right fit for the, for the project that, you know, that's needed, you know, where your skill set would be needed. It's, it's a number of things. So it's, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, you just hope for the best. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's, well, you do. And you keep sticking at it. I mean, we call it drive. Yeah. You know, oh, you definitely. Look yeah. Cause that's, that's the one thing I remember, like when I was struggling at the, at, you know, the most and I, I get, I get myself down and like, I, there would be moments would be like, you know what, like the worst that can happen is, well, I keep staying where I'm at, but I'm going to keep trying. And I just kept applying everywhere. I didn't care if they were hiring or not hiring. If I, nothing, I just, I just kept like bombarding. I mean, respectfully, I mean, it's not like I would do it every day, like every you know, every so often, <laughs> just check, it's like touching base and so on. But until finally, you know, you know, something gave in and like, I, I made it in. So that's wonderful. That's very awesome. So Are yeah, you Patrick, for a minute. Sure. Uh, sure. So I love your I scene. That's you. coming together really nicely. I like the oh, scene. Thanks. I definitely see the storyboard uh, aspect <laughs> of it, which is awesome, because a lot of people don't get to see that they don't realize what oh. it is. Oh, thank you. So uh, that's, that's very, very cool. So let's get into to see what Patrick's working on. 
Oh, oh. man. That's awesome. <laughs> it's so dynamic. I love it. Oh, man. She's going to take him out. <laughs> Get her. <laughs> Get him. Well, or her. I don't know. Like, I don't know if he's in the suit, but anyway. Yeah. yeah. Some, uh, some dastardly uh, deep sea divers coming after her territory, and she's going to kick him out. That's just rude. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, what, what you said uh, earlier about uh, photo references, I think really important for someone like me is uh, I've always had a hard time just drawing things out of my imagination. So for me, whenever I start any project, I always uh, find as many different photo references as I can. Not that they're necessarily what I'm going to draw, mm -hmm. but they provide detail and, and ideas. Mm -hmm. So for this, when uh, we talked about doing mermaids, um, I have a little collection of images that I, that I collected that help inspire me as I, as I draw. And so that's one of the starting points for me. Um, and I imagine, is that how you work as a storyboard artist? You collect references like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like it, it depends like on the, also on the complexity of the show, the show I'm working on right now is pretty simple and it's come and it's, it's, I've been at it for almost two years. So it's come to the point that we've collected just internally a lot of reference, but oh yeah, I definitely still use a ton of reference. Uh, but only every once in a while I may be like, okay, you know what, we're gonna, we might need a new something or other. So then I go obviously outside of what, what we've already collected in, in studio to then reference if I'm, yeah, like I said, if I'm, if I'm looking for something specific, but oh yeah, definitely reference, 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 like, and that's pretty much all the way across like the pipeline. It's not just for board artists, but like for the designers, for the, yeah, for the uh, layout artists, for the animators, for like all across, it, it, you know, it's, it's the only thing that really makes sense to make it, you know, like you said, like to get that, that bit of detail, that bit of, yeah, just. Well, even, even in fan, or, you know, as an illustrator, the, the value, I mean, you get used to and comfortable drawing things in certain ways, like you'll draw a tree a certain way, or you'll draw mm -hmm. a building a certain way. And it's like, okay, that's normal. But um, you want that complexity because uh, oh, life is complex. You know, when mm -hmm. you go out and you look outside, and I think as artists, we get this chance to really look at how unique life is and all of its, its elements. And I can remember uh, William Stout, uh, your, if your daughter likes dinosaurs, Adriana, you need to go pick up one of his books. He, he's fantastic. He but actually he, does love that dinosaur, so I will. I, I, I want to have to look into that. Yeah. But um, Bill told me once, looking at one of my pieces, he said, you know, the one thing was he appreciated was the way I drew the bottles. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he goes, well, every bottle's different. Nice. And so, you know, it's important, I think, for us to get that reference to to realize that okay how do i make this just a little bit more real how do i make this a little bit more nicer how do i make this a little bit more different and so that allows us to having that reference i think is crucial plus the other thing there's another thing that i think reference helps with um especially when you're dealing with with illustration i don't know how much it is with animation but it, it's to make sure that you have the right thing in the right area so, oh yeah so if you were drawing a desert scene, you wouldn't have foliage that was from um, a jungle. You would have foliage that was from the desert, grasses and, and cacti and different things. And if you're like drawing it in, let's say the Sahara would be way different than the Midwest. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's still very much a factor like in that, in that sense. Because like, I mean, like, even when, uh, I mean, because that, that's, that's the thing. I mean, we're still in the business of, uh, of storytelling. So, I mean, and that's not just through, you know, animation and stuff like, like the movement, but also you have to put the characters in an environment that makes sense. You have to put them in, a, in scenarios that make sense. You have to put them in a kind of like premise that makes sense. I, hopefully anyway, even within their own logic. I mean, even if it's not like realistic, it still has to be believable. And I mean, it always, always, always stems from real life and then gets distilled that way. Mm -hmm. So, so no, definitely. It's super, super duper important. So how much does, does your child or your family influence some of your storyboarding? Um, <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because I mean, oh, now that I have a five-year-old, I mean, like, I think it's, it's more evident because I, most of the shows that I've worked on have been for preschool age, including the one I'm working on right now. So there's a lot of things that 
whether whether um whether intentionally or not that just kind of you know make it into my work that come like from that perspective not just as a mom but also as you know living with you know potentially you know like a, a, an audience or a future audience member of what i'm making so um it's it's pretty cool um like i've actually shown her some of my work and then like seeing her react to it it's just been like I, honestly it's it's i can't describe it it's just so cool oh no i know the feeling i think patrick does too i think we've both been there so <laughs> so yeah it's, it's 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 amazing i i can't it's uh She's even come to the point of like, oh, mommy, thank you for making this for me. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's so oh. good. Cause, I mean, but no, but, uh, but no, I mean, in terms of like, you know, kind of like kid, the kid logic, the bit, like how they would act, the gestures they would make, like, I, I mean, like, it's, I don't know, like, I, I find like, I mean, in part, I think it's just practice, like just from, you know, constantly drawing, but I mean, definitely there's again, like, I guess the, the part of like the reference coming like kicking in except this isn't me googling something this is me actually living with the five-year-old so that's she's my reference in many ways that's um, awesome yeah very very cool so i don't know have you i'm assuming you guys have found it similar like when in your own work whenever you've uh it depends on the project that i'm working on um, mm -hmm. if a lot of it if it's my own stuff you know when i watched my first big piece I was watching my nephew and my two sons play and all of a sudden, you know, they just built this whole world in my head. And so it was, quite, it was quite amazing. And then, you know, watching my kids uh, interact or do things or act certain ways, I, I would slip them into my stories very um, quietly. And, and yeah, I think you're influenced on what you, you live with and what you see. Mm -hmm. People will say, well, you sure have a lot of blonde kids in your pictures. And I say, well, it's because I live with a lot of blonde kids. It's what I <laughs> see every single day. That's what, what, uh, what motivates you. And, and so the challenge was to be was, Oh, I have to draw their, I have to draw something else. I got to draw their friends. I got to, you know, add variety to this. And, and that has been, that was a challenge in the beginning. I've gotten a lot better since then, mm -hmm. but watching them interact and play i think gave me a much more realistic um story characters or story mm -hmm. creation because i think a lot of people when they write especially young adult um, and they're writing these 11 and 12 and 13 year olds and they're writing them like they're adults and they mm -hmm. are missing the fact that they are still 11 and 12 and 13 and they're not as um engaged as they make them in these stories that they're True. but they're still kids and i think they forget that and people that especially creators that don't have children mm. um kind of miss that because they don't know what it's like to live with one 24 7 mm -hmm. uh, even now i mean we're 24 7 100 percent. it's not like you go to school and have some time off it's just right there <laughs> yeah and, yeah that's why they're all these smart alex in my comics and stuff my kids are <laughs> always have something snarky to say. Oh yeah. man! <laughs> yeah, Olivia's getting. I mean, she's been at that at that point for a little while. Sometimes I say she's five, going on fifteen for that reason. Because <laughs> holy moly, I'm like when did you get that sass? <laughs> so here's a here's an interesting question that that I'm curious about um, because. You know, as each of one of us have had the chance to draw professionally and, and have a career and a family at the same time, mm -hmm. what have you found has been the biggest support to you from your spouse? Because I've noticed that having a supportive spouse uh, in this industry is almost, for me, uh, just as important as learning to create balance. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... Ah, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Goes, you can say it in Spanish too. We'll translate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I'd say that's that's more than crucial or indispensable. Almost like I mean, like I mean, and that's not to that's not to say that okay, you gotta get married to then have right. a kid to then. Like, I mean, I just mean in terms of like in, like the general idea of having a support network. This there's no way you can. I can see how this any of this would would work out, I mean, personally speaking, 
without a support network. It, it's just so, 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 so important in my I, mind. Like, yeah. And I, I think for me too, I was going to say that um, I'm probably the, <clears throat> the weak link in the equation because oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I get my feelings hurt really easily. And so when I show my, <laughs> when I show my art to my wife, she gives me good, solid, objective critique, but oh man, okay. I can't handle it sometimes. Okay, but, but we have to really look at this realistically. Your wife also studied She's art. A, yes, <laughs> yes. So she, she has a very um, astute opinion about anything I do, and she always sees the weak points. She's mm. really good at that. Because she wants you to be better. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what's so good about her, her eye is that she can see those weak points. Um, but, you know, I, well, I'm a softie. I can't handle the... The, the things being pointed out sometimes. For me, it was, it was having someone that was supportive and understanding. I mean, when I started, I wasn't married. Um, and then when I got married, you're bringing someone into a lifestyle that, that honestly changes on a dime all the time. There, there's constant change in it. There's no, um, I used to believe that everything, you know, that you could get a job with security, but I don't believe that anymore. I don't think anything's secure. No. But, I think, Especially after what's going on right now, right? Well, You're right. <laughs> but I think with art, it's even more in, you know, unsec unsecure. It, it will always change. So having the right counterpart mm -hmm. um, really helps me kind of focus or get through things and move forward as an artist because we're also our worst critics and we beat ourselves up and we're constantly, I'm not good enough or whatever it might be that mm -hmm. we struggle with. And and oh, thank goodness for a patient wife, because she'll look at me and she will go, you got this. You, you, you've always been able to do this. You're fine. We're going to get through this. Everything's cool. And at the same time, willing to go to a show, a convention and work the convention with me or hang out or, you know, because our world is so kind of unique and finite and different and, and kind of bizarre. And a lot of people don't, really have a, a full grasp or concept of what it really means to be a working professional uh, illustrator or an artist. Mm -hmm. So, well, well Patrick, it just reminds me, yeah, I'm going to pass it back to you. And uh, just, just reminds me of what it was like for my father-in-law when I came along and said, uh, when he asked me, you know, well, what are you going to do for a living? And I'm, I'm going to be an artist. <laughs> How did that go? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was talking to an accountant and uh, he, he, uh, he was very tolerant, but I know he had his doubts about us. Mm, fair enough. Yeah, well, hopefully he likes you now. Oh, I, I think he's grateful for me now. But in the, at the time, <laughs> now, now that I'm on the other end of it um, and I have kids that are getting to the age where they can get married, um, I understand where he was coming from. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Well, and that was, I, I think, for my, my own dad, he didn't oppose me wanting to be an artist or a creator, an illustrator. I think he was just more worried, how am I going to support a family? And he didn't want to support that family that I had. <laughs> Fair enough. So uh, we need to put a... Um, you know, something that uh, you brought up earlier, Adriana, was about working with a team. Um, <laughs> how... How has that gone for you? Is that something that uh, was hard to do at first or something that was easy to do working with a team on an art project? How do you say that? Because uh, I, I would say my, I, I've been doing this, like if I, I would count my, my, uh, my animation school years into that because um, not only would we sometimes do projects together, but I mean, like even just the fact that we were all say given the same assignment for a particular, from a particular class, we would just feed off each other's like creative energy and ideas so much. And then I was, that was the first time I was ever exposed to so much variety of like, of not only skill sets, but mindsets, because I mean, like everybody was super talented and like super skilled, but at the same time, like each person had a different approach to certain things and I'm like oh, I would have never thought of approaching it that way or I would have never thought about designing something like that or oh my god it was just so so exciting uh so if anything it's like I find working with a team it's it's almost impossible to ever be in, in my mind like um it's almost impossible to be stuck in a rut because like even when you are I mean like you almost always have someone again granted that you are in a 
in the kind of environment like studio environment that's like you know a good crew and a good show and so on like uh you know because inevitably like no no job is ever perfect and no no show uh project is ever perfect but um but thankfully the majority of the ones i've been in have been great and they've all been like i said like always like you have that very energizing like very like no no don't worry about it okay just tell me what you think and like we'll just kind of bounce it off each other and that's how i've gotten out of like like moments of you know of doubt or like uh, or roadblocks like Eas well, not easily, but like, you know, it's just like, it's never the end of the world. Like it's up to me in my own head to come up with a solution. Like that's, that's the beauty of having a team. It's like, we're all in this trying to problem solve together and it's fantastic and I love it. Well, so, and you can also work off their strengths and your weaknesses. And oh, definitely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you help of each other. Like, yeah, you help each other. Like, I mean, they might have be like, oh, I'm, I'm stuck here. And, and then be like, oh, you know what? How about if you try it this way instead? And then it's like, oh my God. It's like, I, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. So let me ask a question for you. What is the thing that you, and you can be honest, hate the most to draw? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> because I would we say, all have stuff. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. It used to be backgrounds. I still would, I, I, I mean, like, my, my, I want to say, I don't want to say hate. It's just more like, they're dislike. hard. They're hard Strong dislike. <laughs> better i've gotten better at it so i'm not as intimidated by them so i don't i wouldn't say they're no longer up here they're more like somewhere in the middle um i would say vehicles vehicles for anything mechanic it still just breaks my brain and i'm still like <laughs> especially especially if you have to like move them around in like perspective like over the summer i had to like last summer i had to i temporarily worked for a 3d show that had a, a main character, that was Abby Hatcher actually. Um, she has, it has a main character in a little tricycle that she goes around all over the place. And oh dear God, you have to draw that tricycle from every angle imaginable because it's a 3D show. So they can show every angle of the vehicle, but the storyboards are still hand drawn. You have to draw the actual angles. So you're like, oh God, why? <laughs> oh, that's the thing. And I'm like, not my, it's not my favorite thing. But in all honesty, I mean, it's, it's simply because it's not something I get to practice a lot and I think that I get to, you know, really right. get, you know. So it's just more like, okay, I need to build a skill set. I haven't done that. Therefore, it's difficult. Therefore, I enjoy it less for that reason. But just like with anything, it's just, yeah. <laughs> so here's a, here's a, a good follow-up. What would you... Um tell or or what would you tell up and coming um artists old or young because there's really no age limit in this if, if you're good at what you do and you and you're reliable you'll always have work um but what would you what would be the best advice for these young creators that are trying to figure out if this is what they want to do um what would you what would you offer them um Oh man. Uh, or what do you wish was offered to you? Because you mm -hmm. came from a, a pretty unique situation too. You came from Venezuela and you came mm -hmm. into the U S and then you went up to, to Canada mm -hmm. and, and hung out there and stayed. Um, so, so you've been on a move. So you probably had a lot of different um, uh, teachers or, or advice, but what would you wish you would have gotten? Um, I mean, it, it's, Hmm. I would say nowadays, especially in the age of technology, there's a lot of more, a lot, lot more accessibility, not only to professional artists like ourselves, but also the resources, which is great. I mean, like I grew up, I was born in 1980, so I'm going to turn 40 this year. I mean, like uh, I'm going to turn 50 uh, next year, so, so it's all good. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very different world back then, back in like the the 80s and 90s. You know, trying to <laughs> dig through like storybooks and encyclopedias and stuff to get your reference and try to learn how to draw like the things that you wanted to draw so i'd say this is a great age for a lot of kids to be you know learning because they have they have access to so much that i wish i could have had but not only the access in terms of resources like like material but also just again like like this like, like podcasts and like video chats and like things to hear from people like ourselves, you know, what it, what, you know, what it's been like for us. And, and that's, I think, super invaluable. Um, and I'm not saying that to like, oh yeah, I'm great. I'm, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. It's, just, it's something I wish I could have had because it felt like I me mean, when I was growing up, because it felt like such a, um, far away dream. Yeah. Like a far away thing, like a very, they were like very far removed. So, um, 
So yeah, I mean, like not only in terms of, uh, you know, learning how to draw and, and you know, what a, what a life as an artist could be like, but um, also kind of, um, oh, I, I kind of lost my train of thought, hang on. <laughs> oh no, you're good. Uh, I mean, yeah, not, not just in the terms of like, yeah, like resources and, and artists and like what, what a life as an artist could be like, but also to see, okay, well, is, you know, do I do, you know, do I need to save up? Do I need to go to college? Do I take an online course? Like there's so many options now. Um, do, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's amazing now, like what, what can, and, and you know, can, what can be done or what it's just, yeah. Um, yeah. It's, there are so many different opportunities now that didn't exist um, back in the day and we have mm -hmm. like you said so much access to material to inspire us and to teach us how to do these things mm -hmm. um, man I I would have loved I would have killed for that kind of information when I was little mm -hmm. um, yeah I was scouring over comic books and watching old cartoons to try to you know teach myself how it works oh man yeah I remember just hitting the uh like the, the yeah the, the comic book stands like for the for floppies even if there weren't uh comics that I actually read like as if they had cool art I'd buy them just to yeah. study them you know like yep. that's the kind of thing I would do oh yeah. there you go for mine yeah. nice oh, job, Trav. I'll share with you guys but I have so far I'm not I'm a bit slow no, oh. everybody's at their own pace so yeah true true so I was I was trained to be quick as a quick yeah. sketch artist so this no, is, that's fantastic well and you do that a lot for conventions too right travis like I, yeah oh I, sorry i can't do screen share while you're doing screen share so no, no, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll switch it over so yeah i i draw um i draw for a lot of different when i'm at a convention i'll do free sketches we think in the last you know 20 plus years or something i've done close to forty thousand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh um, she's great Oh, I love her. <laughs> I like the expression too. I, I I think that there's something, you know, as as artists, um, she doesn't feel like a a flat expression. She there's there's some mischief going like. Uh, <laughs> Hope it doesn't catch me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's got eyes on him. And he's clueless. That's what I like about it. He is absolutely <laughs> clueless. <laughs> <laughs> this is great oh thank yes. you yeah this well, is seriously the first thing i've drawn for myself since oh god for months and months so i'm very grateful for this opportunity because yeah it's been a long time oh no no this is good i think it allows people to see just a different aspect of it too mm -hmm. uh, you know you can tell the the camera angles you can see the storyboard um training in there does that make sense yeah thanks and, and that's good because a lot of people don't realize that, especially when they're storyboarding. They they kind of they don't realize how important this is. Yeah, yeah. For for storyboarding, per se, in, like specifically, I would say, um, like if, if people were interested in looking into it, it's like um, sequential art. Like you don't want. I mean, yeah, it's it's important to know how to draw and draw well, but more than anything, like drawing clearly, like it clearly in the sense of like. If in, a, if in a few minutes or even better, if you're super fast in a couple seconds, can you convey a message? Can you convey something? Like right now I'm taking my time, but I, in, in, you know, if I were up you know, in, in the zone, so to speak, I'd be whipping these out a lot faster because I have to, because there's so, so many drawings to do and they have to work in sequence. Like you don't want the one pretty drawing, ideally nothing wrong with it in, in, in and of itself, but I mean, within the context of the storyboard, you have to keep in mind there's going to be a drawing before it and after and there's another one and another one and they all have to come together to make a whole and that whole has to make sense so knowing how to basically tell a story sequentially is super duper important and giving that even if you're not not even though a storyboard is not fully animated it's like the precursor to something that will be fully animated later on so you want to give that illusion or that sense that this is what it could look like animated through your drawings. And so, that could and, be. And what do you do to, to pick those story moments? What advice do you have for that to pick those key, those key moments? To, to uh, it takes a lot of practice and it's a lot of intuition and a, a definitely a lot of discussion with your team. 
because there's a matter of also pacing. Like it's, if it's something you want happening quickly or if it's something you want happening slowly, it's like you, you want to build a suspense or you want to like, you know, surprise the audience or do you, it depends on what, what you're after. Like for something like this, like for what I'm drawing right now, I can imagine like it's maybe starting off with a, with a, with, with a boy talking and having a good time. And then suddenly having like this empty space over here where the mermaid, mermaid's not there, but then suddenly whoop, she comes in, sna <laughs> snacks, and then like disappears and then there's just maybe a splash and the kid's so clueless. That tells you a story right there. So, I mean, something like that. It's like, so you have to, I mean, the idea is to use obviously the visuals in favor of telling a story. And in this case, like, again, like I favored the space where the mermaid is because I want her to be the focus. And then her looking at the boy then brings focus to the to you know to the kid that's completely clueless and, and so on. I mean, which I'm, I, it's still there's still principles that apply in illustration, obviously, but I mean it's something that obviously still has to make sense in, in animation as well. And anyway, so um, I don't know if that made any sense at all. <laughs> well, actually, oh, actually, yeah. it, makes, it perfect makes perfect sense. sense. And the other thing that the question that I would have is how much do you actually have to animate when you're doing the storyboards? I have a couple of friends that are other storyboard artists for other shows. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they have to actually animate sequences. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very fortunate. I've been fortunate so far that I mean, like, even though there, I've been in, in uh, very uh, post heavy uh, shows before, mm -hmm. Johnny Test was one of them. Oh, I did, how I cool. Season, yeah, I worked on season six of Johnny Test. Oh, dear God, you have to do a lot of posting, a lot. But that's also because the, uh, the show itself is very, very frenetic, very fast paced, a lot of stuff going on. Oh, dear God, it's a... Uh, it was pretty intense. I learned a lot from it. So, I mean, I have, um, I know pe pe different people have different opinions about the show, but I mean, for, for all it, for what it is, like it's still, it was still the, the show that led and launched me into storyboarding. So, and I that learned a lot awesome. from it. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, I mean, some shows are very post heavy. Other shows are not as post heavy. It, again, it depends on the show, depends on the, uh, what the director wants to see. Uh, some, um, like the one I'm in right now is I think somewhere middle of the road. Like they want to see like the, the key moments in terms of action and acting and expression. And the animators are more than happy to fill in the blanks. But then other shows want, want you want to see something a lot more detailed like from the, from the beginning. So again, it depends on the demands of any particular project. So I got uh, one more question because I'm really okay. enjoying this. Um, where, who are your influences? Who influenced you? Oh, you know? man. Um, and, and I look at it, I, I think I was lucky enough, I got influenced by a lot of European artists. You know, I love the way that they would design stuff. Um, right. And, and I noticed that a lot of artists from Spain had a lot of similar things. Like when I was in Argentina, I would see some of the periodicals and they had the same kind of illustrations and I would be like, wow. So, so for you, what were what were your influences? Uh, I would, oh, it's it's a bit tough. Um, I would say some anime growing up, but also uh, some like just regular like um, uh, comic strip funnies. If if not from like the art style, at least like getting the sense of like sequential storytelling. Um, I read a lot of. Um, oh man, I'm trying to think. Believe it or not, like a lot of like uh, the Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse uh, comics uh, growing oh, up. Okay, like the Carl Bark stuff. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know. I didn't really pay attention to the names at the time. I just went like, "Oh, pretty art." Um, <laughs> I think that was all of us. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, some. Uh, I mean, a, like a little bit of uh, like you know the the big two in terms of like, yeah, like composition and like a bit of. I mean. For what it's worth, I guess anatomy. I mean, like I know it's not really like I just not I, like if I could if I could go back in time to to my old like to to my younger self, I'd be like, honey, don't don't look too closely. I mean, like look at it for in terms of like like how dynamic they are and like basically how they you know how they try to you know tell the story, but don't don't start there for your anatomy training. Um, but uh, let me think. Uh, Funny enough, um, I want to say gargoyles. Like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like Disney oh, gargoyles. Oh, dear on, God. That's on Disney Plus right now. Yeah, I'm so happy about that. Because <laughs> it's funny because, I mean, I had not watched this show in a while. And recently, I, um, I think earlier, oh, I don't know, a few months back, I started watching it again. And it's like, it was almost like looking a little bit like in a mirror. Not exactly, but kind of. I'm like, 
okay, I can see a lot. I mean, and this is not intentional. Like, this is like, okay, I, I'm seeing a lot of how I draw now in that show, even though I didn't mean to. And it's like, it just kind of happened. So but it's what? somehow still my own. Like, I don't know. It's, it, it, it definitely had an impact, I would say. If you get a chance, watch DuckTales, the new one. Oh man, I gotta get on it. I, there's so many, that's another thing that I'm kind of, I'm kind of sad about, like since, uh, you know, with the whole work-life balance, there's so many shows I'm behind on. <laughs> I know, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> yeah, but that's definitely one that's on my list uh, to, to watch. This is great. This is great. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's, we're going to jump into Patrick really quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, let me uh, stop the uh, share here. Oh, you're good. There All you right. go. Nice. All right, done. Patrick. All right. Let's see what happens. Let's see the magic. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see if this pops up. The suspense is killing me. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. So oh, Patrick's thanks. a Patrick's a layer worker. He nice. he loves layers. I'm a deep guy. Yeah, he is. He's, like, he's like an onion. onion. <laughs> 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 yeah and um you know you're talking about influences and stuff uh for me my influences have always been like poster artists like drew struzan um and so i i always approach everything like a um like a composition trying to figure out where things go and um try to include a little drama in this in the design mm -hmm. but uh um, I really was having fun with this one. I uh, I really like what's what's uh, what's happened here. I want to turn great. this into something. <laughs> I'd like to see her cut his cord or something. Have a lot more air bubbles at the top. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm sorry, more Maybe like right <laughs> after he, uh, she cut his. You know, that's something oh, I man. think I learned from studying illustrators. I can't remember who said it, but um, there was someone that said it was really important to paint or to illustrate kind of the anticipation of something mm -hmm. that's going to happen. You know, it's like the audience knows what's going to happen and that's more dramatic than just like showing the most dramatic event. Right. No, that's true. 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 Well, I mean, if you look at the movie Batman um, begins, the best scene in that was when he first attacked, you never see him actually beating those guys down. You could hear it. Mm hmm. And, and the less they showed you, the more you felt it. And uh, how powerful that statement actually is, Patrick. That, that's very, very true. Yeah. It's yeah. That old Jaws thing. You don't have to see it to, to feel it. Um, that's why Hitchcock was such a great director. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you never saw what was going on, you, you, but you could hear it and you could imagine it. You know, Psycho's got that best scene in the shower. Um, and, and when you really learn how they got to that, they created that effect. You're like, oh my gosh, you did that with a melon and chocolate syrup. But yet it was just like, oh my goodness, black and white. And it makes me cringe. And you're just like, uh, but you know, that's powerful storytelling. And I think, and, and I don't know how much you have to deal with this other, you know, this would be a great, another quick question. Um, when dealing with, with that, um, do you find that, that you get pushed to or, or encouraged to show the entire scene, show everything that you can, or do you find that a lot of directors now uh, maybe want to build up the moment and let your imagination work, you know, the, the viewer's imagination? Or is, um, you know, where's the balance? Yeah, um, and again, I, I almost hate saying this, but I, it's, it's, again, it depends. <laughs> No, 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 no. This, this why is it depends, it's more uh, depending on uh, the audience that you're trying to reach. Again, with a lot of preschool work, you kind of spell things out a little bit more for your audience. Like, I mean, yeah, like, that's not to say you can't have mystery or that you can't like surprise them at the end. Uh, but I mean, like you wouldn't, you wouldn't approach it the same way as if you were trying to aim to an older audience where you expect them to have less difficulty connecting the dots or what they might even enjoy it more. So, but yeah, I mean, so it's, it's all again, depending on the audience that you're trying to reach to, but, uh, but then definitely if, 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 and when appropriate and like, if it, if it does, if it serves the story in a positive way, then definitely. I mean, those are, most moments are the most fun. I think it's kind of like 
what's going on or like or you know it's just kind of leaving little clues like the the show i'm currently working on right now um it's uh it's called the pickwick pack um it's like basically you have uh four little characters whose job is to make deliveries to other people in their town depending on uh, on the on their needs like they may have like a, a need and then like you know they have then they they come up with a little package and then deliver it to them but the whole part of every single episode there's a bit of a formula that you get a package that's wrapped up and it's a certain shape and you're trying to guess what is it what is it right so and it's not until the end that you're finally like oh, it's a blah 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 whatever so i mean that's there's always i mean the regardless of the of your audience uh age and like and, and level like there's always uh there's always room for that you know like you don't want to show them everything because then kind of like what's the point you know you just want to take them on a little journey right so creating yeah. that anticipation mm -hmm, for sure that little surprise mm -hmm. it's reminds me of uh um jj abrams and his mystery box he always wants to leave a little bit of mystery in everything he does mm -hmm. that's great um, so uh you know we are we're uh nearing our, our ending time you guys i i do have a final question for you adriana mm -hmm, sure um why do you make art oh man uh and we'll have you share your screen at the end so everyone can see yep. you at the end of your art. Oh, okay. I'm not done. I am so slow. But, no, no, no. Uh, you are just fine. You're doing great. Uh, <laughs> uh, why do I do art? It's, well, it's, I guess it's just a form of expression in a way. It's a way of storytelling. I've always, it's something I've always been a fan of, of, of doing. And then, like, I don't know. It's just like, in many ways, I, I, I feel like I didn't choose art. Ch art chose me, <laughs> however <laughs> cheesy that sounds. But, I mean, kind of true. I can relate. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. And it's, uh, I have, I've been very, very fortunate to be able to carry it on uh, with me as an adult and uh, to, you know, share my art with other people. And uh, yeah, hopefully for the better. Like, I mean, anyway, yeah. You are doing something for the better. So you're creating good art for those little kids. So, well, and we're grateful that you shared your art with us today, too. Yeah. Thank you very, very well, thank much. Thank you so much for having me. This has been a blast. So yeah, definitely. So where can people find you? Uh, well, unfortunately, my, my current, my, my main website has been down for a little while and I haven't had the time to uh, put it up, but I'm on, um, I'm, I'm on Instagram at uh, Adriana likes tea, like at Adriana likes tea cool. and same on Twitter, just at Adriana likes tea. And I think that's the best way to get, you know, to reach right. and like see some of my work. Instagram's the best place for art, apparently. So, <laughs> well, awesome, awesome. Um, we really appreciated having you, and uh, it's been a blast seeing your process and how you create. Uh, we've really enjoyed that, and uh, yeah, we we liked, uh, you know, what a great insight that you have. You know, there's there's so many young artists out there and old um, that want to. You know, they're at that same age where we were at, at the very beginning, like, it's like, it's so far away. And yet, mm -hmm. they can see that it's achievable, you know, mm -hmm. as, as they hear it from other people and hear their stories and hear things that they like, or they don't like, or, or what they struggled with. And so mm -hmm. we really, really appreciate, you know, what you had to say today. Um, definitely you share your screen so we can see, see what yep. we've almost got. So almost, you know, you're still <laughs> working on it. So, but it's all good. All right, I'll show you what I have so, so all far. Right. All right, let's see what you got. All right, all right, hang on. Uh, where's the button again? Okay, here. And here, okay. I'm still learning Zoom, so. So am I, it's all good. So see, this is great. Yeah, you got there the, it is. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I could just see this getting you know, as part of a sequence in a, um, in a storyboard. This is awesome. Yep. <laughs> Well, that, what I really like, too, is it doesn't require any words to understand what's going on. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, well, Patrick, throw it right at you. And uh, Adrian, just hold on one after we, uh, Hydrana, hold on after we just close this up. Uh, yeah. So, uh, again, thanks for listening, everybody. We've had fun, and uh, we'll have more. So, thanks, Adriana, one more time. And thanks, Travis. And thank you, Patrick. Yeah, thank you for having me. And it's been a blast. Yeah, thanks. Ooh.